Hey everybody, Andy here, aka Montolio, and we are back for a vintage challenge today. And I'm running it back. We got to the finals, we split the finals with Ravager Shops last weekend, and the deck felt really good. And so I'm bringing it back, and I don't even think I'm making any changes. I think the main deck is just the exact same. I did make a couple changes to the sideboard. I brought in something like an Argentum Mass Core and a Sky Sovereign. Sky Sovereign to be able to help me a little bit with things like Collector Roofs and uh, be able to get in the way of Frogs, and Argentum Mass Core to be able to chew those same things up. And I've put in a One Ring. Why? I can't honestly say. I just felt like doing it. It's uh, such a weird thing when you have a Mishra's Workshop and you're not putting one rings in your deck as the card is so obtusely powerful. So I'm going to freestyle that one a little bit and see where I feel my gut tells me to put it in and not. But extremely powerful card and one of the def deficiencies of Workshops, of course, is that it doesn't have any card draw on it. So I'm going to put that one in there. And of course, the rest of the, the deck is pretty much put towards uh, any type of bizarre deck and white initiative with the three dismembers but for those of you who are not aware or have not seen any of my previous videos or know about this deck the idea behind this deck is that archibound ravager and walking blister are an extremely powerful combo where you attack in sacrifice everything to your ravager and do a whole bunch of damage and then you plop your ravager uh, token on top of the walking blister and you deal lethal damage this is a very fast and powerful deck, and it has some control on top of that with the Sphere package and Wasteland. So it is a potent com uh, combo. And yeah, let's see how we do today, you guys. And as always, I do appreciate you hanging out. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that button down in the right-hand corner of your screen. I do appreciate it. I'll see you round one. Okay, guys, here we are in round one. We won the die roll. It's possible we're playing against... A bug player. I feel like we just got to keep this and, and just try and get ahead of bug. Play out a turn one steel overseer into a stone coil. And then when they have the option next turn, potentially to cast a lodestone golem or walking ballista and ravager. There's also a strong possibility we get wastelanded, but I, I think that. If that were waste landing us, then we're ahead. Let's see how it works out. Okay, this could be a force of will. And that's in. Okay, well, I'm going to do that then. Okay. No vigor. Let's just see if it's a turn one death rate. I mean, I don't know what my opponent's playing. Could be anything, but they do have one result with bug. And of course, collector roof is a problem for my deck. Okay. Wasteland would be incredible here. They didn't have a force of will previously. I feel like Lodestone is really powerful here. I think I'm going to do it and put them to the test. It's just a very high upside if this resolves, and it didn't resolve. So a bit punished, but I think I probably would have gotten punished regardless. Like, I guess the safest play was probably Arcbound Ravager into Ballista here to ensure that I resolve the permanent. But they're just such a high upside resolving Lodestone there when they've only played a land. So Spell Pierce. Okay, well, we're going to get in. Or we could have played Inspector, got it forced, and put a token on my Mishra's Factory from the Overseer. We had a lot of different lines. We took the greediest line, but with the highest upside to it. Collector Roof is the card I don't want to see. Oh, that's a tough one, too. Yeah, the Mox was nice there. And it is indeed a Collector Roof. Okay, well... I 
I can offer a trade here, but it actually opens their man up as well. But I can't do anything. If they want to trade here, fantastic. No play from me. I mean, it, it, I could have crossed the overseer in there. The issue is I didn't want to open their mana up in case they were stymied on mana. Yeah, Psychic Frog is a good one. Hmm. I think I'm going to trade here. They could cast a death right, but I think that's fine. No attack. Interesting. You don't typically see that in Bug. The card I'm looking to avoid here is Oko. That's from my previous video where I ended up splitting the finals with my opponent. Oh, they ate their yard there. Interesting. Did they have removal? They didn't attack. Okay, interesting. Yep. Really would like to draw a workshop here. This is not ideal. But it puts them in a tough position because my frog could kill their guy here. My stone coil could kill their frog. Unless they discard both their cards. So they are going to get to draw a card. They played a land. Interesting. Do they have a main deck bigger? They didn't attack. I don't like that. I mean, I'm glad they didn't, but... Okay. And this is the world we're living in, folks. We just don't have any lands. They are desperate enough to sacrifice one here. So I could double block here. And they can kill my Overseer if I do it. Do I do it? I feel like my Overseer is really good here. It will cost them their hand. And they'll only have one creature, one frog left. But they will be left with a frog.
Okay. It's a pretty good one. Okay, sit back and hold the frog back here. Could make a six six stone coil here. I feel like spreading it out though is probably best. Next turn, I'll go in with everything. Sweet. They're going to double off. Oh, yeah. That's great for me. You know what? Too late, right? I could have shot it with the ballista. That was a little bit... Uh, Hasty. Yep. All right. Not my tightest play there, but Probably going to trade here. Four is a lot of mana here. I'm not going to wasteland it because I, I, I'm threatening to be able to pump my ballist up here. Which is lethal next turn. If they don't do anything. I'm going to take them off hard cast force of will here.
OK. Ooh, Dig's a scary one. Not an easy one to get out of. The fetch is turned off because I just instantly kill them if they do it. So we're playing against Bug. I mean, the Mastercore and the Sky Sovereign do seem reasonable. I could also see a Dismember or two, perhaps. But I typically like the way I'm set up against their deck. I think Vexing Bobble. Of course, this is where the deck starts to have some, you know, it becomes more difficult because they have things like Force of Vigor, Energy Flux. This becomes more, more important when you're on the draw because they're going to wasteland you. Revoker's decent against them because of death right. Maybe I just need the third dismember because collector roof is just so savagely brutal against my deck. I think it's different when I'm on the play. Yeah, it's a really nice looking hand. Got a mix of lands, creatures, and powerful spells like Trinosphere. Ooh, that's pretty voyage. You're doing that that way. I did find a lotus. Wow. Okay. Oof, I bet. Okay. That does hurt me. So what this play does is it slows my opponent down in that I shut off the death right, and if they wasteland me, they're not progressing their state. So wow, the very aggressive. Okay, that's very aggressive from my opponent. But maybe they were on the wasteland plan and have no land. Otherwise, they need their death right. Oh, well, they don't have a land of period. So oh, they do. Is this an Oko? That would be bad for me. I don't think I'd come back from that. Yep, feels like it. Or Flux. Oko, okay.
not good for me here. I mean, that was uh, them hitting that Black Lotus was very powerful. As Black Lotus is, like Ancestral into Lotus into Death Rite into Collector Roof on turn one when I'm on the draw is pretty brutal. Okay, second oof was too much. Even with uh, the without the second oof there, and they didn't do anything. It probably wasn't good enough. I like hanger back walker in the face of removal, but the truth is, is that I'm not, you're not going to be able to glean the same value in this matchup just because of the presence of collector roof. Very controlling hand. Can I good conscious mulligan this? I don't like this keep, but It's too good not to not to actually hold on to. Like I am gonna resolve a sphere here for sure. This one's likely to get forced, would be my guess. We are going to need some help off the top rope for sure. Okay, and it's a two drop. And the least I can start pumping that up if I find another land. And obviously having three mana is very convenient with a sphere. I have a lot of two drops in my deck. Might as well get it going. Small but mighty beat down. Oh, they have no land. Mm, that's an opportunity. Hopefully I can take advantage. They have bigger. They must.
would love a wasteland another sphere if that's the case yep oh interesting okay just taking the offensive pressure off I don't think I like that vigor It's a great draw. I'm not going to do that right now because I'm focused on construct tokens. Did find a land. Okay. Wasteland. The issue with these dismembers is that my uh, ancient tomb is uh, really taxing my life total here. Like Oko is a problem but i think death right shaman maybe it's a psychic frog at this stage because it's one one of the few things that can get above my dismembers i think i like that oko is a problem for sure but we can hopefully just kill oko given where the current board state is Couldn't punish my opponent there, but get my construct a bit bigger. They're probably force of will this given their desperate state. If they have it, they may as well use it here. But they're at one fetch land should be turned off here. Oh, I lied. Okay. Nice win for us there, guys. Okay, here we are in round two. We're playing against Luris. We did not win the die roll. I feel like we can do a lot better than this hand. Yeah. Hmm. Tough call. I feel like Revoker is probably the weakest of these cards because of Ballista. Okay, no frog. That's good. This is a walking, or excuse me, a Orcus Bowmaster, almost assuredly. I'm going to play the the inspector here. Can 
cannot be hit with Fatal Push right now. So what's better here, to put in a Sphere of Resistance? I feel like Chalice at 1 is just really good. Probably to get Spell Pierced here, but yeah. Hopefully they shuffle. Oof. It's pretty rough. Yep. Hopefully they can't kill my inspector here. The inspector is a very important part of my next turn. Not feeling good about this though. Okay. Playing around spell pierce here, and I will continue. To, oh, they're forcing it. Okay, interesting. I'm Hellbent. Obviously would have preferred some gas more than the workshop there, but likely Polaris to hand here unless they hold up Bowmaster. Okay, now it's the time to draw some gas. That is not gas, but I am going to cycle that. I still have three man up. So here comes Lurus. Mm, time walk. Okay. I don't feel bad about that. Yeah. Oof, that was a nice draw. I'm not playing around spell peers here or uh, days. We're just getting in. It is possible they got Bowmaster, but there's not much I can do about it. Oh wow. Okay. They've got Fatal Push here. No. I mean, I have so much mana. Are they countering that? What? I don't know. Okay. It's just a sign of desperation. Ooh, that's scary. Yep, push. Yep, that's what I was scared of. Great draw.
Do I want a needle for sneak? I don't think so. Likely an ancestral. Let's see if I can resolve this. Getting this in against Snake while I can. I know it seems really underpowered, but I have it more out there as a defensive card. Bowmaster obviously makes that seem really silly. Oh, come on. I have a Bowmaster. Getting in. I think I want to like. Do I do I want to get a revoker in here? Should have actually played Urza Saga here. Bullmaster just gets me so hard here. But I do want to shut off their Lotus. Yeah, that was a... Pretty big mistake. I should have thought that one through. I should have definitely played Urza Saga there. I've set myself back. Good draw. Play around Spell Pierce here. I could see this getting negated. They could hard cast a force here. They did have the Bowmaster. Why did they fatal push? It's really weird. I 
I can make this thing a 2-2 two -two next turn. If I get wastelanded, it's a bit of a bummer, but I'm at 20 life here. Please, no treasure cruise here. Oh, master. I think I just recast it. So I have to try and kill this Lurus here. Let's just draw a crack. This would be good. I feel like I just need to do a big ballista, though. Like, do a two, uh, two casting cost ballista. See if we can get it in. They did have the force. So these bowmasters are going to start wreaking havoc on me. And the problem with my overseer is, is it's just not going to be good enough because of the bowmaster. So I have to wait for the bowmaster to come into play. But they are drawing cards if they choose to do so. So this must mean they have some sort of removal if they're attacking their Lurus in here. Yeah, okay. Nice, no play. This Overseer will take over the game left unaccosted. Oh, they did have another one. Okay. But they're down to one card with no real profitable attacks here. Chalice at one is a heavyweight. I'm not going to play that. Yeah, no profitable attacks for me. But a walking ballista off the top is very strong for me. Can I start attacking here? Take three, and I trade what they are. Orc army? Yeah, I'm going to attack. If they have another orc here, it's bad, but... I just take it. And I just trade with the orc army here. Shrinks my guy. A hard cast force. Mm, I could have paid for it with my uh, thing there. I 
Oh, dig through time. That's brutal, guys. Yep, that was going to cost me the game now. I guess a big ballista is how I get out of this. That was a good draw. Six life. They can deal me four. Five, six. I can't attack. I mean, I've got some huge bombs off the top that can win this for me. Still, like, Sky Sovereign, Ballista, Argenta Master Core. These are all strong cards. Snake is really strong. Like, I can make a massive snake. Yep, that does it. Okay. Loris is always a tough match. The issue I have with this hand is it's just so vulnerable to walking or to uh, to a bullmaster, but I, I'm going to keep it. It applies a lot of pressure casting. Okay, that's aggressive. Um, do not like my state now without that Lotus. That was a very good hit. I think I named Black Lotus. Or maybe I named Bobble. It's more likely I'll hit off that. Not optimal, guys, but that's what we got. Just got to fade a wasteland here and we're, we're in good shape. Okay, is this ancestral? I'm going to play this guy, see if we can resolve it. Yep, cons. Yep, consign. We're still playing magic. Uh-oh. Yikes. Okay, I got that one. Straw land, please. That does work. Oh, they did find a land. Shucks. Bowmaster. Yep, that's really good against me. They get their bobble back. I need another land here. That does work.
All right. Well, we're kind of low on resources, each of us here. It does favor them. This filtering is pretty strong. Lots of good draws for the for us though. And they did not use, so that means something good. That guy named Black Lotus. Black Lotus is one of the cards that gets them out of this. I think there's merit to renaming Psychic Frog here as well, but okay. I'm wondering if I just exposed the academy, do I? I think I can take two life here. This might facilitate a move from them. If they wasteland a response here. Okay. It's a good one. Not likely to resolve, but if it does, Okay, if they miss on colored mana here, it's really big for me. Yeah, they're putting it all in the Ravager, which is smart. Well, maybe not. Yeah, they put them all there, yeah. 
Yeah, they did that right. Actually, they didn't because I can sacrifice my factory. One, two, three, four. Master. Yeah, okay. Okay, it's in. Double waistline. If they have a fatal push here, guys, we're, we're in very bad shape. I, there's just nothing I can do about that in general. I do feel like I need to bring the offense here. This thing's a 6-6. Six, six. I probably have to sit back on some level of defense. If they get in front of it. So here's the thing. I can just straight up kill this thing, or I can try and kill them. But if they have the fatal push, I, I lose the game. Do I need to do that? Like I can sacrifice, like they know that I can do this. I'm 
The thing is, is this is just not getting a lot better for me, but I think I'm just going to do this, let them kill their guy here, and not overreact. Maybe it's a little bit wimpy of me, but... They didn't do it. Maybe they're really disciplined. Maybe they don't have it. Oh, they're just willing to straight up trade? I'll do that. They do have a saga to, coming in this turn. They're going to do Lurus. Well, maybe my cowardice cost me last turn. But I got a 10-10 a stone coil coming in if they don't have it. Okay, and they've got a 3344 coming out. Lodi was a good one. So this does keep them alive. If I move the Ravager over onto this, it's the same thing. They are holding up Fatal Push. But this is like a huge sacrifice, a sacrifice on their part. Three minutes and 45 seconds. What does that leave me with if I do that? I just don't think I need to do that. Right? This is going to hit them for six. They're going to gain three. This is just lethal. See if they have the push. Unless they don't realize my snake has trample. Oh, they did stay alive. Okay. Well. Hmm. 
Yep. Once again, playing things really safe here. Have to have a hurt bulls here. Feel like they've got something. Okay, sorry about all the noise, guys. My garbage truck is going by the house. I shut one of the windows, evidently not the other. Very loud. Okay, guys, here we are in round three, and possibly have run into our toughest match up in Oath of Druids. But I'm keeping this hand. I don't know that they're on oath, and if they are on oath, they still have to have the turn one oath, and this is a hand that can get away really quickly. All right, that's what I've got. Badlands. Interesting. That was a really good draw from for me for sure there. If this resolves, I feel awesome. Didn't need to do that there, I guess. Free attack, but this here was a nice play here. If they don't have a fetch land or a wasteland here, they're neutral mana. Okay. You don't see a Badlands very often in Vintage. Bolt. Okay, guys. My video crashed there, so I'm hoping it works here. We need a creature. We did not find one. So unfortunately, we're a little bit light here. I mean, I don't mind the strip mine in this situation, but it's still mana neutral because they have the DRS. Uh, I really needed to draw a threat there. But Ballista, Snake, all of these X spells, Hanger Back, will be very strong in this position if I can rip one. Wrong, okay.
should have done this differently. Because they've got a free psychic frog attack now, but I mean, that's not the worst. Probably I'm just going to outright attack with everything next turn. We'll see what they do with the frog first of all. But my factory, smaller factory, is not at a lightning bolt range, but I think that's okay. Okay. Yeah, that does work. Can't even really profitably attack into the frog now. Okay, Inspector Solid. Don't think I can really get in here. It would cost them. Um, they could discard their hand and kill my overseer. I mean, it's not the worst, but I feel like overseer is really putting on a lot of pressure here. So I feel like we just sit back for this turn. I'm not thrilled about it, but. The fact my opponent had to demonic tutor to find a wasteland last turn is pretty telling of what their situation is, is that they're they are under a lot of pressure here and this overseer is no joke like in itself next turn is going to be attacking for six and my opponent doesn't play anything yes they can still hold my overseer back but Okay, they do have lands, I will say that. They found land. Good draw. This could get forced. Now, they may have removal here. But even if they do remove the Revoker. Six, it would cost them. They can't kill my Overseer. And they can kill all these. They can double block, though, if they remove my frog. But I think that's somewhat profitable for me, right? They just lose their whole hand. I'm going for it. It's going to require them to... Kill my Frexian Revoker, first of all. That's going to take two of their four mana. Well, Masters does do the trick. Yep, that's pretty good. Yep, all right. That did not pan out.
I can't get everything with my overseer, but this is still a lot of damage coming in. Like they've got to pick and choose how they're going to do this. I still think feel like things are very profitable here as long as they don't have some sort of removal spell. Like the thing with the psychic frog is it comes at a cost. Yes, you can maybe get rid of my overseer here. Okay, they are jacking it up. I wonder if they're just going to put it in front of the inspector and maybe just chump my steel overseer. Nope, they are actually going to trade with my overseer here. That's the only thing that makes sense there. Actually, no, they can just save with my foundry inspector and stay alive. Okay. Okay. I mean, it was kind of a one for one. But they're hellbent. No attack. Okay. I can just kill the Psychic Frog outright with the uh, Overseer activation. It cost me a fair chunk to do it, but... So they can make this thing a 5-6. So chump this, kill this. I think I just blow up the Deathrite Shaman. Right? Kill the Deathrite. Attack 4, and a, yeah... Now, they can gain a couple life here. Maybe I just don't need to do that. Can I just... Uh, four, I can make this a five if I just attack with it. They block. They kill this. And then I just shoot their thing down. I'm going to attack with both. I mean, they're probably, probably playing... Uh, Collector Roof, they're a hate bear deck. They're playing a lot of creatures, so I don't think that Thorn is likely to be at its best in this matchup. Revoker seems decent on... Deathrite Shaman, of course, I, I, I do acknowledge they have Bowmasters here. In all honesty, I really just like everything I have, but I gotta cut three spells. So 
feel like this is one of my lower impact spells, but especially if they've got collector roof, it loses some of its utility. I do get that it can hit uh, death right shamans. Maybe cut a steel overseer. Seer overseer, so good. I don't want to cut one. Fairly nice showing for factory as well, that game. They do have lightning bolts, though. I don't really like this hand very much. I feel like we can do better. Really don't want to see a collector roof turn one. That would be pretty devastating. Our hand is extremely powerful. Surprise there. Time walk, okay. We do have three dismembers in our deck. Be awesome to find a dismember right here off the top, I can tell you that. Death right, yeah. Not ideal, guys. Got to pray we don't get wastelanded here. We are. No, it's just remember right now or we're completely dead. We're probably dead anyways, but at least we get to play a little bit of magic here. Saga. It's a good one. That was a good draw. Yeah. 
Okay. I'm just finding four color bug good stuff here. Okay. Okay. Possible they have force of vigor here too. I don't know for sure, but I'm gonna play Urza Saga into Mana Crypt into Sphere of Resistance. And we'll see if we can ride our saga. And if not, we can build towards a Sky Sovereign. It's a pretty reasonable plan. Now, it's dangerous putting out a Mana Crypt. I do acknowledge that when we don't really have any pressure. But like a quick Wasteland does change that. But I do feel like resolving a Sphere is strong. Makes my Ancient Tomb a lot worse too, but... They do have force, okay. Hopefully it's like death right go. Oof, it would suck here. But I guess I have an answer to it. We need some gas here. That was a good one. Pretty happy with that. I just don't want to take any more damage than necessary because of the mana crypt, so I'm going to expose the workshop. Nope, I think they're struggling on mana here. Can't imagine they have a dress down, but. Come on. Could be a Hercules recall. A soul ring. Because I have Dismember, I'm a little bit safer doing this. I do have Force, okay. I don't like my Consult ship. <laughs> Could have played around that, I guess, huh?
should have played the ancient tomb there. Most definitely should have played the ancient tomb. Yep, for that exact reason. Now, can I pay for everything here? I, I know I have to sacrifice some stuff to the Ravager. So I can keep these three. I let these two go. These get greatly diminished. I'm going to have to sacrifice one of the constructs, or I could let the Ravager die and keep the two constructs, right? Tap, tap, keep the two constructs, and they will be one, two. They're not very good, really. Okay. This will be a two. But I feel like the extra damage is probably worth it. The only problem is his next turn. If I get wastelanded, I lose my creatures. So Okay, that was actually a very costly mistake. Last turn not playing that Ancient Tomb. I'm just playing really sloppy. I can just hope to draw an artifact this turn if they wasteland me off my Ancient Tomb. They can save one of their moxes, and then they wasteland my, my ancient tomb. I sacrifice my soul ring to my ravager. That's one life. And then I can plop them on my factory the following turn if I need to. Yeah, it works. Okay, they got the green source. Yep, that does work. As long as I don't have a Vigor here.
Okay. That was a little bit sloppy, that last game. I don't know what I was thinking, not playing that ancient tomb, but I commented on it twice and didn't do it. But we didn't get punished there. We'll take that. It was a close one. Okay, here we are in round four. On the die roll. And Lurus. How do I feel about this hand? Turn one, three, three stone coil. Yeah, I, it's it's a bit weak, but I'm gonna try it. Like, this hand can apply some pressure, as long as the Mana Crypt gets through. They're going to proactively force it. Well, that's pretty good force. Okay. I do have, I mean, I'm going to put it out as a 2-2 and pray it doesn't get forced. Because I don't want to die to die to a bull master. Okay. Do I just tie up both their mana here? Will I have an opportunity? Or do I just kill the Doughty Voidwalker? Here go. It's a nice one, man. Kind of want to just get that going, but maybe I just cast a cast it, cast a two two snake. Just hope they don't have anything. Okay. Yep. 
a great hand. Polaris. Got the Voidwalker. Another big turn from them. I play this out first into Spell Pierce. They may have it. They didn't. They didn't do anything with it. So let's see if I can resolve my Inspector. It just resolves. Um... Okay. That felt really uh, easy. Like, I felt like we were going to win that easily. Like, let's say they Wasteland pull Nurus to their hand there. Like, we're going to untap play of Saga. Put a Revoker in. We could put a 1-1 one, one Ballista in. We're going to untap. We're going to have an active Saga with all likelihood. Like, Chalice on, on... Oh, wow. That was a great one. Chalice on one is just all their removal that they have because they're just solely on fatal pushes and of course lots of cantrips in their deck. So yeah, nice win. Okay guys, here we are in round five. Our opponent has a lot of results with Dredge. So something to consider. It's a nice looking hand. My current build does not have a pithing needle main, but we're definitely keeping this. We'll see if we can resolve the vaccine bobble. It's very strong if it does resolve, and then we will play a steel overseer. They have kept their seven. Here's a situation where the bobble is quite good. This resolves. Okay. This keeps Noxious Revival off the table, where I may have to proactively pop the bobble. I guess it doesn't matter, because I was thinking about bridges. That just counters my Ballista and should remove the, uh, the creatures. I guess it counters it. It doesn't actually go into the graveyard, so I would have to pop the Ballista. But let's see what happens here. Okay, that's a pretty good Bazaar. Hollow one is countered, too, if they have it. I feel like getting Inspector going here is just really powerful. No reason not to do it now. I can just skip through my turn here. I can't imagine they want to anchor it here, but they might. Now, we do need to fade a second Bazaar here. If they naturally have it, it's bad for me. Okay, wow. I mean, we were going to go buck nutty there for sure. Going to play two Ballistas there and just start blasting these things. Yeah. The good news is, is we get a lot better post board. So these are all things we want. I could see the one ring being good in this matchup here. We certainly want Leyline. Certainly don't need Chalice. Revokers are an easy cut. I still need to cut five. I feel like Inspector is kind of the odd man out here.
perhaps a sphere. Let's try this out. This is not good enough. Can I keep this on the draw? No. Much better. I'm, I'm glad I was aggressive with my mulligans there. Leyline is just hands above better than any other type of removal or uh, hate against dredge and even though they've kept a seven there are games that they just can't beat lay line of the void at least not easily See if we get griefed here or if they have a hollow one. Okay, it was only one, so that's good. We draw a bobble. Workshop's pretty good. Hopefully they force this if they have a force. A will, that is. They did. Okay. I'm not going to play a 1-1 snake here. No vigor, which is good news. Now, they're very low on resources now. Yep. Okay. Mm, that was a good one. All right. Well, I'm going to play it. And, and this is a risk. Like if they have a wasteland here or another forest, obviously it's not ideal. But if this is left, uh, if this resolves and they can't wasteland me, then we're likely to win this game. Because Trinosphere is just a very powerful card. Okay. So I'm at 12. I think I'm just very content to trade now. Because they're not casting another spell this game. Yeah, very easy. I have found this matchup on the bizarre side of, or the shop side of things to be very good against Dredge in my experience. So um, just Leyline. Like, if you're not running Leyline right now in any non Luris deck, you're absolutely crazy. This card is just so good. My opponent kept seven there, and yeah, we maybe had to get a little bit lucky they didn't have a Vigor, but 
that is the world you live in when you're only able to keep a hand that has a bizarre you can't send send non bizarre hands or send bizarre hands away looking for all the tools that you need but we'll take that guys a nice clean 5-0 today okay guys here we are in round six we're playing against true hero they've recently been on a dedicated underworld breach deck oh man this is so nice okay If they're playing what they've been playing recently, and there are several results with the Underworld Breach deck, they do not run Wasteland. That would be the card that would scare me the most here. But I came to game. Like, I, I, I'm going to slam a Chalice here. Oh, wow, maybe they're on Bazaar? into one card okay so they are just looking to see what i'm playing i'm presuming they've mulled the zero they're just taking a break they're they're gonna i feel like this is just a really it's a relevant match right we're yep Yeah, I think they're just trying to get a pulse on what I'm on. And I'm happy to oblige because I am doing a video here and would like to get things going. Yep, they got a bit of information. And I do think I know what they're playing, so I'm going to do this. I don't know if I want Cage. The Cage does have applications against Breach. Because they're running Hercules Recall, I really think that these types of cards are high risk. You know, Ravager is still good because we can... Sacrifice things to maintain our, um, so we can get the token for the Ravager if they're killing something. So I think that's worth it. Okay, what do we want to cut here? stone coil let's try this out okay yeah they've just conceded i'm glad they didn't make me show the ley lines but yeah we will take that guys nice clean swiss we're gonna be top of the uh, top of the top eight and we'll see what we draw that's that can be a curse sometimes but yeah guys i have to say the deck has run really nicely so far uh i hope you guys have been impressed by it as well and yeah we got to the finals i think last week split the finals with uh, ravager shops and hopefully we can do so again see you in the top eight okay here we are in the quarterfinals and we won the die roll we're running to ekron i don't know if they're on doomsday I am going to keep this hand, though. What do I want to do? I mean, it's pretty powerful. Obviously, if I'm playing against Doomsday, this, this is not optimal. Okay, they do have force here, so this is a good force if they hit it. They chose not to. 
Do I just do a mighty big stone coil here? I don't think so. I'm going to get my beat down going here as much as I can. We could have done a much bigger stone coil next turn. But I think I want to get things going just in case this is actually doomsday. It is not. Okay. Jewel, maybe. Or is this... Um... Oh, it is jewel. Okay. Well, let's see how they do here. Okay, they got a metamorph. So I do need them to brick here. Might be a bit of a tall order, but... Okay. This is definitely one of the weaknesses of my deck. Tinker, okay. Probably just another jewel. Or do they got Vault Key? So it's just the jewel. maybe it's hard to imagine that I my opponent can't win from here but maybe not you never know if I can get my hands on those jewels I, I, I win the game for sure Okay, that's good news for me. Probably just, uh, I mean, I, I don't know what's going on here. Ring, okay. Peel. Okay. Sphere what is what I need here. Okay, I mean This is likely just going to get countered, this one. They're just not even interested. All right, well. Guess we could have made a 1-1 one, one snake more, but that's okay. We're just going to try and press as much damage as we can here. That's what I've got. Of course, the ring activation.
This is one of the few matchups. Oath of Druids and Jewel are the two decks that I think I would struggle with the most with this deck. As you can see, I've had any type of fair deck. I'm just laying it to waste. And even against Jewel, like, I don't feel like I have a horrific matchup here. Like, it's obviously the hand I kept was a little bit loose against uh, Jewel. I think we had a much better game against Doomsday than Jewel, the way our current hand was set up. But we do have Revokers in our deck to be able to, and Spheres to be able to gum things up, Wastelands. Like, of course, it becomes a lot more difficult on the draw to control those things, but I don't hate our chances. I'm playing this out because there is a fizzle point on these decks, and I don't think Echo Bronin is in a place where they're going to fizzle. They have 15 cards in their hand with basically unlimited mana. But I've played enough Jewel to know that it is possible that they just pick up all lands and counter spells and, you know, fluff. Now, I know they have a number of jewels in their hand, metamorphs, etc., rings, but let's see what happens. So same thing, they're probably just going to PO on my turn here. Yep, that's what they're doing. I'm not sure why they're fooling around doing that. I find it interesting they're, why wouldn't they just pick it up here? I have no cards in my hand, but they're discarding a whole bunch. But... This is what you call playing with your food. Okay. Yep. They could just be redeploying all this stuff instead of fooling around like this. I don't know. Interesting. Okay, here we go. I just have to hope they make a mistake here. Bad news for me is I don't have any mind break traps in this list, but that was an active decision. And Jules kind of been on the decline a little bit over the last two weeks. There was a big surge in Jewel post restriction. People were just bringing it. It was still doing really well, but now it's on the decline a bit. I'm not sure what Echo Bronin is doing here. I, I just have a feeling they're fooling around with me here instead of trying to get the game over with, which is a little bit frustrating if that's the case. I, I have, they have 18 cards in hand. I 
them is another metamorph. Okay, I, maybe they're just legitimately looking for fault key here and not fooling around with anything else. I, I don't know. But they should be able to find it here. Academy is uh, would be quite a card here, wouldn't it? It's kind of uh, the age old story when you're playing against combo and storm players that run you up unnecessarily and. When you know your opponent has no cards in your hand and you've got 25 cards in your hand and or you've got lethal on the stack, like there's no need to do it. And you still need to present the combo to let your opponent know that they're fully dead. And I, I don't know, there, there, there are the Storm players that will say, well, you know what, it's your right to concede and let me have my fun. Well, fair enough, but I, I think it's really a respect thing. It's... Somewhat tilting, and I'm not saying uh, Echo Baronin is doing that 100. percent Maybe they've just been hitting air, but I mean, look, we all know the composition of their deck, and I'm not sure what it is they're they're looking for outside of Bolt Key here. But uh, they've they've got a lot of cards in their hand to be able to find it. Well, let's see. I don't know. There's the Academy. Well, that's a pretty powerful land right now. Now, they do need to be careful here. They have one Metamorph or Jewel left in their deck. So even with a time vault, yeah, so they're just POing for one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Okay. And they probably can kill me pretty easily if they found the bolt, the time vault combo. Now, because they've got all the metamorphs back in their hand, that should be, is that all their POs? One, two, three. Oh, it's just three of them. But need to make my opponent execute it. I can't play any jewels anymore. So, I'm not going to tap my hanger back here because I'd much prefer to be able to hold up uh, blockers. Worm coil engine, yep. Yeah. And they can copy a bunch of worm coils. My creatures are not really ones they want to be copying with Metamorph.
I'm still probably dead here, guys, but the question is, is can they kill me before they draw three cards? And my Hangerback Walker does a pretty good job of blocking a bunch of creatures. I still have not presented the vault key here. Yeah, they might get me here. Okay, we're going to get another turn. Just looking for a creature. Probably won't get it through a force of will, but... We just want to get as many blockers out as we possibly can. Win the flip, please. Oh. All right. No, we're not going to get there, unfortunately. It's close, but we're gonna, they're going to have one card in their library by the time we're said and done. I guess there's a small chance, like, right, I have to block three. Oh, nasty. And I got Force of Will, right? Yep. Nice. Didn't think about that one. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, they got me. But they've got eight minutes and 45 seconds left on their clock. Probably want to ring. Skyship could be okay. The issue with Skyship is they've got the metamorphs, right? The ring I'm not as worried about. I do like Overseer, but I think it's a little bit on the cute side. I'm going to try this, guys. Ah. 
problem with this hand is that, like it's so fast. I guess I do it. We just hope they don't have a, a turn one ring. I mean, I can't send this back. Hopefully they force this. They did not. Echo Bronin is licking their chops, but this is what I've got. Hopefully it's just a setup turn, not a ring. Or a jewel for that matter. Yeah, that's brutal. I really just want to hurt them with metamorphs. And this is really aggressive, but 12. That's what I've got. All right. Yep. Yep. Played into the trap a bit. We're pretty bad here right now. I've got them very dead if I get to untap, but. Yep. Just have to hope they brick, guys. The worm coil will not do it. Yep. I chose not to keep look for a controlling hand, and I went all in. My emptied my complete hand on turn one, which is going to be devastating against most decks but not this one and of course i know that but figured i got to get lucky a little bit here and hope to get to a game three and then we can look for the controlling hand yep They got to be careful here. They're down to four life. I haven't even played a land this turn yet. Yeah, probably in pretty bad shape. Where this becomes good is if they decide to pivot towards creatures. My Ravager is a very powerful creature here that I can push the damage through with the Ravager. And of course, Echo Bronin would know that.
Okay, at least they're not paying life here. Uh, I, I just will take any extra mana that they're spending, hoping to shore this up. But just appeal. Yowzers. Looking for that academy, I guess, eh? Now, I do apologize. I, I know this is a horrendous watching experience. I hope you got this on double time here, but I can't concede. Like, I need to see that they have it. Yeah, they got the time bolt. Yep, that should do it. Okay, guys. Well, an anticlimactic uh, finish to our tournament here. Um, you know, in fairness, I knew what I was playing against there in game two, and I kept a loose hand, and I just died to it. And game one, my opponent uh, uh, went off pretty nicely on me. But anyways, guys, um, the deck, I thought, performed really well. We went a clean 6-0 through the Swiss, and I, I mean, I guess round six didn't really count as true hero uh, i don't know whether they truly mulligan to oblivion game one and just realized it didn't matter or they just threw it all away but uh we will take that the deck performed really well and yeah i don't think i'd make any changes i mean y y yes maybe i wish i had mind break traps there to give myself some uh a better chance excuse me but that's not really what I'm gunning for here is Jewel, despite I do think that this deck does have some game against Jewel. You know, Wastelands and Spheres and Revokers are no joke. We just didn't find that side of our deck and opted to play it out. But, yeah, as anyways, guys, I do appreciate you hanging out. Please uh, look down at that bottom right corner of the screen there. Hit subscribe for me, and, yeah, we're going to see you next time.